Hi friends, Holly Hobby here. We are gonna be cooking today and I'm so excited because this is a recipe I've never made and who doesn't like meatloaf? So we're gonna try a new way to make the meatloaf. We're gonna actually smoke it in our smoker and add a bunch of ingredients. And so I'm really excited to share with you. So don't forget to subscribe, click that bell so you get notifications and comment below. I'd love to know what you'd love to see us make as we hang out in the kitchen together. So some of the ingredients you'll need for today, one pound of ground beef, one pound of ground pork, eight strips of bacon cooked and chopped. I've actually got those in my smoker right now. I usually will do them at about 350 degrees. In the smoker, different layers of the racks in there. Uh, I always, I love apple wood chips. So those are the wood chips we've got in there right now. And it's gonna be about 30 minutes for each side. Depending on your elevation and type of smoker, the times may vary on that. We're gonna use two eggs, whisked, a uh, half a cup of panko breadcrumbs, a quarter cup of milk, a teaspoon of seasoned salt, and a teaspoon of garlic powder. Oh, don't forget, half a cup of a yellow onion, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and two cups cheddar cheese shredded. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and prepare the onion. I've shown you different ways to chop onions in the past. And this is another method, just going down the sides, leaving the stem on there. And you can take off that back layer, just peels back really nice. Then you can use that to hold. I'm just gonna chop on through. You will need to chop additionally. But you get the idea. Lots of different ways to cut an onion. The onion will add nice flavoring to the meatloaf. And the breadcrumbs and egg and milk will add, that's our binding agent. Keep it all together, hopefully. There, and I can just throw this part away. You can also compost it if you are into gardening. You can absolutely put that in your compost bin and let it do its magic. I'm gonna want some big chunks of onion because I love the flavor of it. I like the texture, texture of it as well. Use the knife to go ahead and cut it in the bowl. Now we're gonna whisk the eggs, which whisking is simply using a whisk. I'm gonna go ahead and add the milk. Add the panko crumbs, which is half a cup, and that was a quarter cup of milk. And now we're gonna go ahead and add the sausage and the beef, one pound of each. I don't know where you get your meat, but I am part of a CSA, which is a meat sharing farm to table kind of a situation. And so it's local and it gets delivered every month we get a delivery. I prefer that over grocery store meat, but it's totally whatever your preferences are. I like it because I know I'm supporting local and I know they're grass fed. They do a really good job preparing everything up. Fresh meat like this, um, raised in a field versus raised in an area where they can't just graze, tastes totally different. We're gonna finish with the cheese grating. You can buy pre-grated pre cheese, you can buy uh, lots of different kinds. This happens to be a Colby Jack. The recipe does call for a, sh a cheddar. So depending on what your favorite is, roll with it. It does call for about two cups. I'm just gonna get this dumped in there. That is about a cup and a half, so we're gonna do a little bit more. And you'll notice if you use a grater like this, that 
The grooves go in different ways. So when the grooves are up top, it captures the cheese a little bit easier than if we did on the opposite side. It just doesn't, not a lot comes out. So I also use, like to use a hand grater, such as this. You just simply put the cheese in and you can spin it around. In this case, I do want bigger pieces. That grater tends to produce smaller shreds of cheese. Now I just wait for the bacon to be ready on the smoker and then I will chop that with you. Okay, great. So our smoked bacon is ready. I'm just gonna pat out some of the grease here. It smells amazing. And I'm actually just going to I'm going to chop it in my food processor. Always make sure you put the lid, protective lid, back on. And this little guy, I'll have it on my Amazon page so you can see it, but it's just real fast. And that's that. Now we're gonna scoop it in with all of our other amazing flavors. Now it says that we need to shape it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it all put together. It says definitely do not process it too much. If you do that, it might not stay together. Another reason why it might not stay together is you might not have enough of your binding agent. It also recommended to use an aluminum pan uh, or any kind of pan that works well with a smoker. Now, anytime you put a pan in there, you're blocking some of the heat getting up. So I'm actually gonna put this on one of the lower shelves. Get as much heat as possible because it needs to be 325 degrees for about an hour and a half. And you'll want to test that using a meat thermometer. I use a digital one. The meat thermometer will want to gauge at 165 on the inside. It doesn't say you should flip it or anything while it's in there, so I'm just going to leave it as is. So I feel it's at a decent consistency. It's heavy, <laughs> that's for sure. Shape it into the shape of a loaf. And there we go. I'm going to pop that guy into the smoker and I'll show you when it's all done. All right, so the meatloaf is 165 degrees, cooked at 350. Be sure to check those instructions because you don't want to have undercooked meatloaf. Uh, we're really excited to taste this because of all the different flavors. It really is beautiful. Um, yeah. So I hope you have fun with it. Enjoy. Uh, feel free to add whatever condiments you want to on top. And uh, leave comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell. Leave the comments. Let me know what else you'd like us to make. And tell me how it is if you try it. Cheers, my friends. Let's have fun in the kitchen. Bye.